Hi, I'm Fox. Have you ever thought about plagues? No, not just thought about them. Like, actually thought about them. Why do they happen? What causes them? Well, in our project, we wanted to take a look at pandemics. In particular, we were curious to know what a super pandemic, something much bigger than COVID-19, would do to the world. Our, the goal of our project is to show how it would spread, how it would affect the world's people and governments, and especially, how would we handle finding a cure, or would it wipe us all out? To ask these questions, we used a simulator called Plague Inc. The simulator allows us to input informa information about a plague prior to starting, such as th its name, whether it's a bacteria or a virus, and how long the healthcare system is, or how strong the healthcare system is. My bad. Or... In other words, choosing a lev le level of difficulty for, for the sim. Then, when you run the simulation, you can choose your symptoms and what country the disease starts in, and then, as the simulation progresses, you can evolve that durability, heat, heat resistance, cold resistance, and drug resistance, which shows how resilient your disease is, is or not. During the simulation, you can also evolve how disease spreads. So, for example, you could choose by livestock, blood, by water, is it airborne, p passed by rodents, insects, or bo and, or, and or birds. The simulation will actively try to cure the disease while you evolve the disease. Now, you might be asking yourself, what's the purpose of this? Do simulations like this have a practical application? Well, in the case of natural disasters like earthquakes, tsunamis, fire tornadoes, and pandemics, or even things like war or battles. Governments do ha have simulators that they can use to try and gain more knowledge and map out what it would look like if this thing happened so they know how to respond. If we know how to respond to emergencies, we can save more and more lives. For our experiment, we tried to recreate two famous pandemics that actually happened to the best of our abilities in the simulator. Then we tried to create a made-up super pandemic that would be worse than anything we've ever seen before. Then we ran simulations on each of them and collected the data to compare. The two pandemics we chose were polio and the BBP, or bubonic plague. Our super pandemic we named the quackening, for no reason whatsoever. To run these simulations, we had to research pandemics in general, but also virology, which is the study of viruses and bacteria. We had to research polio and about the black, black or bubonic plague to see how they affected the world, but to also get details on how to add, what to add in their simulations. We had to learn so much terminology, such as virology, as mentioned before, the study of viruses and bacterias. Cloning, it's a literal clone of the disease. What a surprise. And whatever the heck a capsid is, it's a shell of protein around the disease molecules to keep them from dying out in the cold slash heat. While we were running these simulations, we were surprised about how much we learned. For example, we learned that governments have m two main strategies for fighting outbreaks, finding a cure and locking down borders. Sometimes these two strategies can conflict because governments don't have the necessary funding to execute them. We confirmed that if left uncheck, uh, unchecked, a disease will run to the point where everyone is infected and governments shut down, which causes anarchy. We learned that viruses and bacteria evolve themselves to make to, or in order to avoid extinction. They don't want to kill us, so they become endem an endemic, a virus that never ends, like the common cold. So, a successful disease would be one that infects everyone, but has a very low death rate. Our worst plague in was in fact polio, rather than the quackening, because in our sim simulation infected the entire planet and, only and killed only 4 billion people, leaving enough people for it to be kept alive. In our made-up disease, simulation, the quackening infected the entire planet, but only killed 20 million people. We think this is because we evolved it to have really terrible symptoms. If a disease has really terrible looking symptoms, for example, tumors, cysts, swollen lymph nodes, and pustules, or open sores, even if it is not necessarily de that dead deadly, governments will, and people will jump on, jump on it trying to develop a cure and shut down the borders as much as possible. 
our most deadly disease actually had symptoms like insomnia, massive fatigue, mental breakdowns, and organ failure. All of these symptoms don't look that bad on the outside, so we found that the world moves more, more slowly towards a cure. If we were to do this project again, we would leave more time in our schedule for more simulations. It would be fun to try to recreate all the famous disease pandemics and then compare them to see what makes w one more deadly than the other or one more terrible than the than the other. We learnt that there are many, many factors in this that aren't just about the disease itself, but about people and how they react to sim st situations, about governments and how they allocate resources, and about different cultures and, ha and how that affects how the world reacts. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.